So, we have to have a very big role of nutrition in menopause to pause it because in menopause the health of the women is at stake as it was in stake during pregnancy. So, overview normal biological process which marks the end of the reproductive years and defined we know is as consecutive absence of periods for 12 months. Onset would be around early 40s and 50s but can vary from place and ethnicity and symptoms vary widely, hot fl flashes, mood swings and all we know. So, nutrition is important because among various aspects of health promotion and lifestyle adaptation to the postmenopausal period, nutritional habits are essential because they concern all women and can be modified and impact both the longevity and the quality of life. That is most important at that time. So, the common health issues we all know about the menopausal symptoms and these are the very symptoms we are trying to reduce and trying to give no medication or reduce the medication and See to it that nutritional supplementation helps as ma'am said in the beginning of talk that we have to counsel them how naturally they can cover their issues. So in uh, menopause they are exposed to chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease, tumors, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, obesity and osteoporosis. Lifestyle modifications and nutritional interventions are essential to reduce the risk of chronic diseases. So common health issues, sorry. And importance of managing the menopausal symptoms would be improving quality of life, enhancing the emotional well-being, maintaining healthy relationships, optimizing cognitive function, preserving the bone health, cardiovascular health, enhancing sleep quality and preservation of sexual health. These empower women to embrace this natural phase of life with resilience and confidence. So, uh, the management has to be individualized. Lifestyle changes are recommended. They are to control your weight, reduce alcohol intake, reduce salt intake to less than 5 grams a day, increasing calcium, potassium and magnesium intake, increasing consumption of vegetable fresh foods. We have already seen ma'am has given such an elaborate talk on it. A holistic approach that includes other lifestyle factors such as regular exercise. Dr. Aruna really said very well that it has to be very important and stress management complements the role of nutrition in managing the menopausal symptoms. So, we have to have a balanced diet, phytoestrogens, calcium, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids and food. So, so, balanced diet, a healthy balanced diet can help counter the symptoms of perimenopause and menopause and prevent many chronic diseases. It helps in maintaining weight and energy levels. Mood and mental well-being is very, very important to be taken care of and hormonal balance goes haywire. That is the reason why we are having menopausal symptoms. Bone health, muscle strength and mass, that is sarcopenia also sets in, that has to be taken care of by exercises. Heart health is very, very important. Overweight, how we define overweight when a body fat percentage is greater than 30%. Or abdominal circumference is greater than 88 centimeters. We are talking of visceral adiposity, which is very, very important in postmenopausal because fat redistribution occurs, and that is the worst sort of adiposity because that fat is biologically active and produces chronic inflammation. Waist to hip ratio, that is the reason why waist to hip ratio comes, should be uh, greater than uh, around 0.8. And mean uh, upper arm circumference should be around 32 centimeters or BMI less than 30 milligrams or greater than 30 milligrams per meter square would be obesity. So, how to maintain and achieve a healthy weight status and body composition that is hormonal changes leading to decrease in metabolic rate. But basic metabolic rate of a postmenopausal woman decreases because she becomes more sedentary and the decreases to the tune of 250 to 300 kilocals away. And low uh, uh, bone mass uh, during menopausal transition averaged around 1.5% uh, decrease of about 0.2 kgs and fat mass increased by 1.7 percent per year that is mean annual absolute increase of 0.45 kgs and we are talking of fat mass we want fat free mass that is a muscle mass to maintain ideal body weight redu weight reduction energy 
of around 0.5 to 1 kg per day can be achieved by omitting midday snacks, taking small meals, reducing portion size, avoiding sugary liquids and alcoholic beverages. Mediterranean diet is supposed to be beneficial for weight loss, blood sugar control and cardiovascular health. Ideal rate of weight loss is around 0.5 to 1 kg per week which occurs from fat body mass while maintaining the muscle mass which is very very important. Reducing energy intake by 15 to 30 percent of 500 to 1000 kilocals from current requirement is good and approximates around 25 kilocals per day. So in overweight reducing 5 kg improves tolerability to hot flashes. So that is very important because she is suffering and we are giving her dietary and exercise changes. So Mediterranean diet, it um, contains antioxidants, beta carotene, vitamin C, E, selenium. These are all the benefits. They decrease the oxidative stress, increase bone formation and improves the muscle performance. So Mediterranean diet is supposed to be very, very ideal. And what is sarcopenia? Sarcopenia is muscle loss and strength and it means uh, in which occurs during uh, menopause. It can be diagnosed if the woman has any of the following conditions. That is fat free mass index less than 15 milligrams kilograms per meter square and uh, appendicular skeletal mass index less than or greater than uh, equal to 5.25 kilogram per meter square. Muscle strength again has been given in this chart. We can always copy it. And these are the way how we assess the muscle strength. And for a woman, because she becomes more prone to fall, more prone to osteoporosis, her muscle strength should be very, very adequate. So fluid intake is very important to transport nutrients and oxygen contributes to health of the skeletal system. An individualized appropriate amount of fluid intake that is around 33 ml per kg per day is recommended and has to be divided evenly across the day has positive influence in cardiovascular health and electrolyte balance. So lipid and metabolism disorders, before menopause, estrogen presence gives a favorable lipid profile with lower cholesterols, LDL and triglyceride. With menopause, lipid parameters deteriorate, blood vessel elasticity decreases and organ blood supply decreases. So cardiovascular disease risk increases. So unfavorable lipid profile can be changed by dietary control. And these could be uh, altering the fatty, uh, fatty acid composition, that is quality of the diet is more important than the total amount. That is a grade B recommendation. Saturated fatty acids may not exceed 10 E percent. That is the amount of fatty acids we give saturated ones have to be balanced by vitamin E. And when the uh, total caloric intake is less than 10 percent, then vitamin E uh, dose should not be increase. So sat saturated fatty acid should, should not exceed more than 10% of your uh, caloric intake. It can be achieved by replacing saturated fatty acids with polyunsaturated fatty acids in the diet. Dietary and supplemental omega-3 fatty acid replace saturated and trans fat that is animal dry dairy and partially hydrogenated fats by tropical liquid vegetable oils which contain PUFA that is coconut palm oil and palm kernel oil. So fiber intake is also very important, dietary intake of 30 to 45 grams and recommended, to, uh, recommended and taken can be achieved by whole grains or 400 grams of fruits and vegetables as WHO recommends. So dietary recommendation to prevent cardiovascular disease would be body weight control according to the body composition, salt consumption less than 5 grams per day, vegetable spices for seasonings have to be limited daily recommended uh, intake of 500 grams per day of fruits and vegetables ma'am is very nicely elaborated that four portions of vegetables and one portion of the fruit or you can make it three portions of the vegetable and two portions of the fruits carbohydrate metabolism lack of estrogen in menopause adversely affects carbohydrate metabolism increases the risk of metabolic syndrome decreased insulin secretion by pancreatic beta cells decreased insulin sensitivity in muscles Thus, glucose uptake is decreased in liver increase of gluconeogenesis and lipogenesis. Triglycerides accumulate, VLDL increases and insulin cle clearance decreases. Adipose tissue lipolysis increases, fat cell size increases and inflammatory in mediators increase. So, lifestyle interventions with dietary changes and regular exercise aimed for moderate weight loss of 5% are mainstay for prevention and progression of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Carbohydrates with low glycemic index, fibers, 
25 to 30 grams per day and regular exercise are the key mantras to balance your carbohydrate requirements. So bone metabolism is also important. Menopause is associated with osteoporosis. Bone loss increases 3 to 4 years before menopause and lasts for around 5 to 10 years with approximate bone loss of 2% per year resulting in 10 to 12 percent of bone loss thus reduce bone mineral density and increasing the risk of fractures so prevention is by vitamin d a fat soluble vitamin sources are egg yolk dairy products ophal and food supplemented with vitamin d vitamin d preparations should be taken with meals for preventive purposes a dose of 2000 iu per day is recommended daily calcium intake is around 1000 to 1200 milligrams regular exercises and avoiding smoking and alcohol these are lifestyle changes again the uh, people the, the uh, women become more prone to cancers and tumors and that is again because of uh, decrease increasing insulin resistance maintaining a normal nutritional state and body composition is very important to reduce the risk of cancer goal is achieve a normal range of fat free mass and skeletal a better skeletal mass highlight is to follow guidelines of a balanced diet regular inclusion of cruciferous vegetables regular intake of 500 grams kgs of vegetables and fruits tumor size can be reduced by optimizing energy intake that's the very uh, good carry take home message that we can reduce the tumor size by uh, dietary alterations so proteins and menopause, menopausal transition, lowering estrogen levels have been associated with loss of lean body mass and increase in fat mass. To maintain or increase fat free body weight and skeletal muscle mass, daily protein intake should be around 1 to 1 1.2 kilograms per kilograms of body weight, that is 20% of the energy. Regular exercise with free weights are against resistance. but don't think that we give a high protein diet, high protein diet rich in around 1.5 to 2 grams per kilogram increases the risk of fractures because the bones are very fragile. So we cannot make the muscles more stronger. Micronutrients and menopause, vitamin C essential for bone health, a recommended allowance is 100 milligrams per day, sources are fresh vegetables and fruits. Vitamin B plays a role in processing carbohydrates and functioning of new nervous system. It reduces the risk of stroke, osteoporosis and fractures and role in prevention and treatment of cognitive decline and dysfunction. Vitamin D and calcium essential for uh, reducing fracture risk and osteoporosis. Soy and estro uh, phytoestrogens, we all are very, very fond of giving them. Soy foods give isoflavones and phytoestrogens. Isoflavones reduce menopausal symptoms, reduce the frequency and intensity of hot flashes. Recommendation is around 20 milligrams per day, corresponding to around 400 ml per day of soy drinks or 80 grams per day of soy products. In Asian population, study says that intake of 20 to 25 grams per day, that is around 250 ml of milk uh, of uh, drink is safe. So role of microbiome, this is another part which was very new to me and it is very very important because estrogen levels affect gut microbiome. Gut microbes, estrobilomes deconjugate estrogen and phytoestrogen into active form which is then reabsorbed. But don't be in the under uh, misconception that a patient of uh, a breast cancer with estrogen receptive tumor would be not benefited by this. The estrogen coming from here does not affect that. Probiotic supplementation improves cardiovascular health and reduces cardiometabolic risk. Fermentation of polysaccharides and undigested proteins by microbes produces short chain fatty acids which benefit metabolic pathways. Maintaining heart healthy gut microbiome with well balanced diet helps in preventing dysbiosis. But this another caution was already there that it does not affect your tumors. So sleep and menopause, very important. Sleep disturbance is uh, significant, around 40 to 56 percent. And we need around recommendation is 5 to 7 hours of quality sleep to maintain optimal cardiovascular health. Sleep and circadian rhythm factors affect appetite, nutrition and metabolism. Diets with adequate tryptophan levels, that is the precursor to melatonin, improves sleep pattern. Adequate intake of folic, vitamin B6, 12, magnesium, zinc essential. And as they are cofactors in melatonin synthesis, omega-3 fatty acids include influence serotonin levels. So lifestyle factors, we have seen uh, regular exercise, stress management, adequate sleep, maintaining healthy weight, quit smoking, social connections, mind-body practices, regular health checkups, vitamin and mineral supplementation, limit alcohol intake, 
and hormone replacement therapy as and when required. So in conclusion, body composition is important. Use body composition analysis tools to assess nutritional status, not only BMI. Keep the weight in healthy range with adequate nutrient intake. Manage overweight obesity by reducing current energy intake by 500 to 700 kilocals per day and regular physical activity. So this is the dietary recommendation, just a slide to be given so you can all take it down. And to be avoided is simple fast acting sugar, smoking, sugary and alcoholic beverages, sedentary life. Salt restricted to 5 grams per day maximum. Saturated fatty acids not to exceed 10% E of total energy intake. Okay, okay, yeah. Dietary recommendations. So, so calcium, vitamin D, and uh, low chain uh, proofers, vegetables, fruits, legumes, red meat, deep sea. <laughs> <laughs> So, in summary, menopausal transition has been associated with loss of BMD, lean body mass and increase of fat mass. RDA for protein intake may be sufficient to maintain low, uh, low uh, uh, adequate bone mass. Mediterranean diet components could be linked with better uh, lean body mass. Low carbohydrate, high fat diet should not be recommended in order to reduce uh, fat mass. And uh, another important thing I came across was low carb diet and high protein and low fat diet may be giving you an equal weight loss, but their cardio metabolic risks are different. So you have to balance it. Don't have to see according to the body composition. Some people would be advise a low carb diet and some people would be advise a low fat diet. So in overweight obese, low GI uh, diet could lead to greater decrease in fat mass than controlled diets. Future studies evaluating the effects of low-fat plant-based diets is required. And calcium vitamin D intake is important. Diet is major modifiable risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Low energy diet is recommended for postmenopausal women to prevent metabolic disturbances. Low-fat diets also improves requirement. Mediterranean diets are very, very significant. Mediterranean diet is associated with small but significant decrease in BP, reduced cardiovascular risk of in different females cohorts, although more evidence is required for these outcomes in postmenopausal women. Thank you. Thank you.